One of the most controversial issues facing Americans today is immigration. Nearly 1 in 10 voters considers immigration to be their top priority, and border security was easily the most notable goal of President-elect Donald Trump. But just how should we tackle controlling our borders? Today, we will explore a few proposed strategies. Currently, immigration to the United States is usually due to familial ties, work visas, and political asylum. Over 90,000 are employed by the U.S. Border Patrol and guard our borders with Mexico, Canada, and the Florida Keys. However, some claim that the United States is too lenient in enforcing its borders and too liberal in distributing visas. President-elect Trump campaigns on three major ideas to fix this. First and foremost, he proposed a 2,000-foot wall along our southern border and able to ensure an end to illegal border crossings from Mexico into the United States, as well as stem the flow of illicit narcotics into the U.S. Secondly, Trump called for an end to the H-1B visa program, ending the importation of foreign labor and protecting American jobs. Finally, Donald Trump has promised to institute a temporary moratorium on all Muslim entry to the United States in efforts to reduce acts of terror. However, the critics have unearthed several criticisms of these plans. Regarding the wall, many point to the extraordinary cost of such a structure. The Washington Post estimates the proposed wall alone would cost $25 billion, not accounting for access roads, security systems, or the ongoing costs of staffing and repairing the wall. Funding this mega project would require both drastic cuts to spending and tax hikes. Trump does claim that he will force Mexico to pay for the wall by halting all commerce with Mexico until they comply. However, Mexico has stated repeatedly that they have no intention of paying for any U.S. projects. The president-elect's plan regarding H-1B visas, however, seems to be more viable. The H-1B visa system allows employers to bring in foreign labor to work with the United States, which Donald Trump claims hurts the American economy. And there is evidence to support this. H-1B visas have been abused by companies in the past to train unskilled foreign labor in preparation for outsourcing. Although many companies use the system in good faith, importing skilled labor, there is a major flaw in the system, which some companies are using to export American jobs. A temporary halt and refactoring of this visa program may be for the best both economically and in the spirit of the law. Here's an interview we did with two immigrants on the immigration and naturalization process. So how did you come to live in the United States? So my company in England um, asked me to go to the United States for about two years. And I was lucky enough to be able to get an L1 visa as a result of that. Um, but you two uh, decided to stay permanently. Yeah, after we'd been in uh, Connecticut for a couple of years, um, we had L1 visa, L2 visa, um, but we wanted to stay permanently. So the next step uh, in the immigration process was to apply for a green card. That was a very thorough process and that involved uh, in, uh, intensive background checks, financial records. We even had to do blood tests and AIDS tests and physicals. So very thorough process. That took about a year. After a year, we were both issued with a green card that meant we could stay permanently. Uh, green cards typically last for 10 years, and so we kept the green card for 10 years, and after 10 years, we uh, applied for permanent residency. Because we had been here on green card for approximately 10 years, had filled in tax returns every year, never been in any trouble, no felonies, anything like that, the actual naturalization process was quite easy. It was filling out forms, some interviews, some civics tests, and um, that process took about three months. But it was quite easy because we'd been in the same house for a number of years, we'd pay taxes, and everything was good. If you do the right thing, you can get a permanent residency. All right, thank you. Perhaps Donald Trump's most controversial stance is his Muslim ban. The proposed halt on immigration has been deemed necessary by the president-elect until his foreign policy experts can figure out what is going on in regards to terror. This ban would purportedly affect all Muslims wishing to enter the United States, even U.S. citizens abroad. This ban would be coupled with the registration system of all Muslim Americans. Critics have called the president-elect's plan inflammatory, xenophobic, and even self-harming. David Cameron, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom at the time of this ban was first proposed, even went so far as saying the statement was divisive, stupid, and wrong. High-ranking members in both the Republican and Democratic parties stand firmly against the ban, including sitting President Barack Obama and Speaker of the House Paul Ryan. The ban has been attacked for many reasons, but most notably for the 
possibility of radicalizing moderate Muslims and impeding the rights of Muslim Americans. Donald Trump will be sworn in as president very soon, and we will see his plans to address immigration put before Congress. So here is our message to Washington. Immigration has issues, it's undeniable, but rash reactionary decisions like enormous border walls and bans on an entire group of people are only perceived symptoms. Instead, explore programs like the H-1B visa system and find and close the loopholes that allow them to be abused by corporations and individuals. We can solve the issues in immigration without harming individual rights or spending an obscene amount of money on inefficient mega projects. Let's build a better America for all Americans.